Our economy is strong as hell. The internal thing. Inflation is worldwide. It's worse off everywhere else than it is in the United States. Silicon Valley Bank Signature Bank. First Republic Bank has been taken over by federal regulators and sold to JP Morgan. Second largest bank failure in the country's history. Fair to say you simply flooded the system with money. Yes, we did. That's another way to think about it. Guess what? You froze the economy. We printed digitally. So we, you know, we, as a central bank, we have the ability to create money uh, digitally. And we do that by buying treasury bills or, or bonds or other government guaranteed securities. And that, that actually increases the money supply. We also print actual currency and we distribute that through the Federal Reserve Banks. We're, we're sort of at the beginning of what is going to be the most anticipated recession in probably modern history. Everyone ex expects the recession. Our economy is strong as hell. What is going on, YouTube? It's Brendan from Market Makers. Sorry, I could not get the video out yesterday, guys. I spent half the day in the car and then the other half in the waiting room. My dog, Tiger, has to go back to his surgeon every two weeks since he had sh shoulder surgery to get stem cell injections. Believe it or not, yes, they do stem cell injections on animals. So supposedly it helps him heal. The things we do for our pets. I can tell you, I don't know if it helps him heal, but I can tell you it's definitely very expensive. Guys, we got a lot to talk about. The NASDAQ rally tech ripped up we had pal and uh, bernanke doing a casual conversation today which wasn't so casual with pre-planned questions and written out answers for pal so that was pretty boring we want to see if the market structure has changed with the debt ceiling negotiations going on right now apparently one of the republican lawmakers walked out and said the white house is being unreasonable shock and surprise and guys we got to go over the charts and see what has changed in the marketplaces what trades are active what trades are setting up going to look at equities going to look at bitcoin and look at the metals okay let's go ahead and jump into this all right everybody this video is going to be brought to you by simple fx and bing x if you want to come hang out in our discord that's the place to be and you get a free month on our discord try out simple fx decentralized exchange to trade everything that we talk about here on this show and you get up to a five thousand dollar instant deposit bonus Bonus on our link or Bing X for you crypto bros. No VPN needed on Bing X, by the way. Slew of altcoins on Bing X as well for you DGENs that like to trade all the meme coins. Okay. You can check it, check them out as well with our link and then message Lee in the Telegram. Lee will get you set up in our room for a free month. And when you join, guys, you get all of our indicators and everything that we have custom made from Fractal Trade 15 as gifts. So there's a, it's a no loss situation for you. I think you'll really enjoy it. Message Lee, he'll give you the details. All right, let's go ahead and jump into this. Looking at the DXY, guys, we talked about this last video. Is looking for it to potentially move if it gets more bullish up to 103 spot nine, even more bullish 105 spot eight, and of course the golden ratio at 108 spot nine eight. You can see the dollar here put in a double bottom, and I think these are realistic targets. You know, you have a lot of people. We talked about Warren Buffett last couple of videos selling 13 and a half billion in stocks. You have people going the money markets. You have people that understand. Last time we had a debt ceiling debate in 2011, the stock market fell 18 percent, even though they got the deal done two days prior to the deadline. Treasury Secretary Yellen said we have to June 1st. That means it's coming up very close. Next week is the last full week if may before the deadline okay so i think if there's no deal or no deal in principle announced let's say monday tuesday wednesday you're going to see some panic building up in the market and you're going to see the vix spike up as well let's look at the vix i threw down this trend line here from the all-time high january 4th right that was when the s p made its all-time high and you can see here the complacency in the marketplace that's 16 spot 34 in the vix every time you dip below it you get a little rebound back up these are all baby pops right Baby pop. So back in the 2011 uh, debt crisis, I guess you could call it. Lee, throw that chart up, by the way. Guys, look at the chart. <laughs> do you think we need to raise the debt ceiling or do you think we need to cut spending? Let me know what you guys think in the comments because I'm looking at that chart. Every president, going all the way back to Reagan, every pre president's added debt, right? But it really took off under Bush with the foreign conflicts. And then it really, and Obama put it in overdrive. So it's Republicans, Democrats, they all add debt, okay? Obama 
Obama put it in overdrive. We had the great financial crisis. We had all the bailouts and stimulus, 0% rates. And the government just keeps spending and spending. And then look at that arc. You are now at $32 trillion in debt. Okay. $32 trillion in debt, like 130, 135% of GDP. And they just want to raise it. They want to keep raising it. How about no? How about you cut spending? That would be good cut spending because if you keep raising the debt, you're going to just keep spending more money. No business or family could run this way where you just keep saying, ah, honey, just keep raising our debt limit on the credit cards. We'll never make enough money to pay off the debt, but let's just keep raising that debt limit. So you got to cut spending. You got to make a sacrifice. Sacrifice. If people have to do it, the government should have to do it as well. Certainly, they have plenty of pet projects they can cut spending on. But last time, the VIX got above 50 in 2011. Okay. And again, we had our credit downgraded as well. So, you know, and the stocks fell 18%. So, this is just something to keep an eyeball on. The market seems to not care. This is very complacent, guys. This is, again, this is the same level that you're at for your all time high with the SP just under 4,200. Let's look at the bull case narrative because we had some minor structural changes here that could show a potential for more of a breakout on the SP. Let me turn my phone off. And if we look at the SP, this is the bull case. I circled it here in red, okay? I'm talking bull case and price action. That's the that's the core thesis of any bull case is the price action because the fundamentals, as you guys know, in the, in the economy are bad, right? We have high inflation, year-over-year -year continuous claims of 22 23%, only seen in a recession or just prior to a recession. All the indicators, leading economic indicators, all flashing vibrant red for the most highly anticipated recession in human history, right? Everybody Everybody knows it's coming except apparently the stock market. So when they say that, it irks me. Like Larry David, it irks me. We're all irked by the fact that they keep saying it's the most highly anticipated. If it's the most highly anticipated, then why would you buy tech stocks when tech does horrible in recessions. That is why you will see tech come down greatly because now all the PEs are getting inflated as price keeps rising. But let's look at this. So here's your bull case, the price action, 42.89. Okay. So to expound upon that, the bull case with price action would be price keeps rising. People sitting on the sidelines in cash will say, wow, I'm missing out on a big move. Then they go to buy stocks. Then people who are shorting then have to cover and the market moves up. That's basically the fundamental price action bull case, okay? But the fundamentals of the economy and people that are tracking it know that it will be short-lived. So again, upside risk, 42.89, guys. You're, you're looking at the market at 41.94. You're talking about 100 points. We got the 43, what, 22 over here, our August high. The s and is being buoyed up by the tech sector. Now you can see structurally, let me get rid of these fibs so you can see it's a little bit better. So structurally here in your Wyckoff trading range, right? Here's your up thrust. And structurally, your position here, you got an up thrust now outside of your 4,200. Remember, we've been at this level over and over again at this 4143 the 4200 level this whole cluster here this was 4143 here same here and then this whole area in here that we've been trading in and out of these markets for these 100 handles drops right waiting for one of these moves like we traded last time that i shared with you guys and we traded on our discord nice nine percent move down okay so if this fails that's what you're doing you're coming back down to test your base at 3800 you lose your base you're going deeper you guys know these numbers we go over them quite frequently. So looking at this, you have price. It could bounce up. It's showing a lot of weakness because why? Let's look at the breadth, guys. So the breadth of the market. So we, well, let's look at the MFI first. The MFI is right back at the median line. You can see this could be a triple top structure here, which would look like the gold chart, right? Look at the volume ratio. This is buying versus selling. So you have price going up, but look at the Look at the volume here. So not only is the volume light on the uptrend, but you have overall the markets being sold off. So that means you're gonna see this in the breadth as well. And you can determine that here. So the amount of stocks on the S&P above the 50 day moving average is 50. 50% 50 of the stocks in the S&P are above the 50. Let's open this up. These are a set of the indicators here you guys get when you join our room for free by checking out one of our two sponsors. So just message Lee in the Telegram to do that, guys. And look at this. So, all right, so the S&P 50, half the companies in the S&P 500 are above the 50. This is a big algorithmic trading area, okay? Let's check the 100. How many companies in the S&P are above the 100? 
only 41, almost 42%. How about above the 200? How many companies in the S&P are above the 200? Less than half, okay? So less than half are above the 100, less than half are above the 200. Very difficult to get a bull run. We talked about this last time. If you look above the 200 here, last time we were at this price range, we're actually higher than we were here back in February. You see this? This is when we got to that 41.95. So you're actually higher in price, but you had 75% of the companies in the S&P above the 200. Now you have less than half. Okay, so it's a big difference in the trade-off here. So fewer companies concentrate at wealth. And the thing is people are like, well, the market can still go up. Yes, it can still go up, but those companies will cap out. They will get too expensive. The algorithms will stop buying them. FOMO will die off. You lose buyers the higher and more overvalued price becomes. So you want a broad breath rally to really push price up. So long story short, can price get to 42.89? Yes, that's the upside risk. Does it have to? No, but I would watch this breakout area. You have the 45 angle here. You're positioned on it. Look how beautiful that's sitting there, by the way. You're positioned on it for support. So you may get some type of stab up here, which again, guys, is only another 100 point, less than 100 points away, okay? That's basically my upside risk, 42.89 to 4,300. So we'll see if we get this. And I do think, especially if this debt ceiling continues to go, I see south or be difficult next week, you're going to get this repeat of this move. If you do get this breakout up, I think you're going to get this repeat of the move back down. And this is when you made your October lows. Funny how the market moves in patterns, right? So if we do get this thrust up to our 1618, let's see if we get this exact same repeat, repeat down, especially if the debt ceiling goes south. Now, people are asking me, what about if they resolve it? Well, I think you, that, that could also be a catalyst to get your upside, right? They resolve the debt ceiling. Oh, look, it's all resolved. That could be your catalyst. Again, I expect it to be short-lived because of the decay in the economy, but we'll see when it gets there. Let's check out Bitcoin on the weekly. Weekly, this is a critical support area. Notice this is a 45 angle here on Bitcoin, okay? You can see I was respect it here and you're resting on your laurels right here at 26,894. You lose this, you're coming back down again, okay? But I don't anticipate Bitcoin losing this unless the market really starts to sell off. Conversely, if the S&P does start pushing up, maybe you can get a little bit of rebound of Bitcoin. But just look at on the weekly. It's just been consistent decline, right? But if you get a little bit of a rebound, this could be a double top structure as well. We'll see what happens here on the weekly. Obviously, it takes a week to print these candles. I'm anticipating when Bitcoin does get more bearish, when the markets get more bearish and they do sell off, then you're looking for a further decline from, you know, 12, 13K on Bitcoin is my next bounce area for it. Okay. You're currently at 26,894. Let's look at this on the daily. So on the daily, here's your Wyckoff structure. Here's your 200. Your 200 is down here, about 22.5. So we've been over this many times. Not going to bore you with it, but you have your lower high structure, your double top structure. I told you this could be coming up for a double top on the last video, and that so far looks like it's what it's doing here. Here's your base, came back down for your heart, and now you're rolling back up a little bit, making the same structure potentially coming down. I have this coming down to about 25. Let's look at this here on the fib retracement again. Get up here from impulse and roller mouse come on cooperate there we go all right so 1618 at 25k okay that's the top of your white coffee you want to see that hold you don't hold this you probably make some type of structure like a double top and you're going to come back down and retest that 200 just like you did here okay that's what you want to see and then if you do retest this 200 and let's just say you bounce up like that you have in a larger time frame here, this is a daily chart. You have a head and shoulders pattern you just made, and you will have some type of slanted neckline as well. So lots of things to watch if you start capitulating and falling down. Okay, let's check out the money flow. Money flow is bearish, but you are oversold. So you could see a nice little bounce up here, um, which is what Bitcoin's trying to do. And that could be the bounce for your double top. Meeting resistance. I guess we should talk about where that resistance is. That resistance, guys, at 27,601, where you hit it here again got close to it a couple times again that downside support 26104 that you wick through okay so just watching this kind of decay between me and one of the other traders in the room, we've had those two shorts on here. Both of them equaled out to about 13% moves. It's Mark short 
and this was my short. Of course, Mark would say, well, why wouldn't you just leave his short open and catch this hold decline? Which you could, but I got to take credit for a trade too here. So I shorted up here, 14% move. Mark shorted up here, 13% move. Those trades are posted in the Discord, guys. Let's look at the NASDAQ because the NASDAQ had a nice move, right? So this trade, I have a garbage entry on. I'm not happy about this trade. I took a small position. I posted this trade in the Discord. I got in, I have a blended average there at like 13.5. Obviously, it, the pump literally happened, I guess, the next day or later in the day. I don't remember now. All the days blend together, all the charts I look at. But we got all the way up to 13.9. Um, this trade for me is not a full size trade as described in my discord, but I put a real tight stop on this at like 14 one, just to see if it does pop up here, it will stop me out and I'll just pursue it like any other trade and, uh, look to see if we get a new bear structure. But this is a nice target here. As you can see our double Wyckoff structure, we go ahead and get rid of this fib. So you can see it's a little bit better, a little bit cleaner. Your 200s down here about 12,000. And so I would look at this as well as an ABCD pattern. Okay. This is geometric trading here it says a b equals c d that's your one fib up there market likes to move in symmetry harold gartley had this had this pattern in his book profits in the stock market and you can see that i mean almost like to the dollar almost literally to the dollar got your 100 percent symmetrical move in the marketplace thirteen thousand eight ninety four. so will this hold well, that's what we have to see, guys. And again, a lot of this is going to come next week with the debt ceiling negotiations because the media likes to pump that up, right? They're like, oh, you'll see in the news, oh, markets went up on renewed renewed hope of good negotiations. That's In truth, that's not why it's going to move up or down, maybe for some people, but there's a lot going on in the background, right? You have options expirations. You have lots of different things going on in the background, all times of price. You have algorithmic buying and selling. So this defeated, again, this was the bull case here. This defeated it's August high. Okay. You got above your August high. So the S and P in retrospect is like down here trying to battle Wyckoff, trying to get up to its August high again, because the S and P is broader. This is a NASDAQ 100. The S and P has all different sectors in it. Uh, tech is obviously a component in the S and P and that's what's holding it up. So I think this is a rally to fade. Okay. I have a short on, if I didn't, I would be shorting up here with using ATR as my stop loss as well. Okay. We talk about all this type of stuff in our discord guys. So this is what I want to see happen here. We'll see if this starts dropping down, building a structure at that resistance level. And then this thing should start pulling back if the market really starts to roll over. If it doesn't, then this thing's going up to the 1618, which would be 15265. That would be the bias for it to go up to. And that would be very close to your all-time high. So do I see that happening? Could it happen? I mean, anything's possible in trading. Again, my view is downside risk is much more real than the upside risk. This is a nice, I think, what was this? A 3% pump? You know, off of the low here, this was a, I think the NASDAQ's up exactly one third, right? 33%. 33 spot 41. So Dow theory, guys, 33, at 33, 50, and 66%. That's his three key retracement levels, right? It's funny how markets, Dow came up with that in the 1800s. Funny how you will see these numbers reflect it all the time. Very close to Fibonacci too. 33 is very close to 382, right? 38%. And then 66 is very close to 61 spot eight. And then they both have 50%. Dow and Gans at 50% was the most important number in the stock stock market for the natural having and doubling in the stock market. So again, reciprocal move. I like this area up here. This is the area I would fade. Unfortunately, my trade again is lower. <laughs> I wish it was higher. Can't win them all. If I get stopped out, I'll be looking to short it though, for sure. Seeing where that next potential movement would go to. And if I don't get stopped out, I'll be happy to recoup my current red losses. Looking at silver, another one of my trades. This was a great trade. Posted this in the Discord as well. Nice, almost 11% drop in silver. Silver broke the trend line, trying to get back above it. I'm looking for silver to give us a larger macro double top, something like that, okay? So I'm looking at for silver. Again, if it repeats the GFC cycle, silver went down 61%. I have silver coming down potentially at 12 to $14 if it does truly start to capitulate, okay? And you'll be making also a headed shoulders pattern if you come down here at the 618 at $20 and find support and roll up. We shall see. Remember, the thesis is if silver can hold the trend line and the markets roll down and the markets are not rolling down yet, but 
if and when that time comes and silver holds, then it could be bullish. If it starts capitulating, it's repeating the GFC cycle. Same with gold. Gosh, this was another good trade. I got in gold at 2058. I did not nail the exact top. I got the 2067 and I got out of gold and this went all the way down to 1952. Getting a little bit of a rebound here, but an excellent trade. Again, this was posted in the Discord and we talked about it on the channel as well, guys, because this is always getting above the 2055 and then gives you some money, right? Even if it starts moving up and down like it is now, you get a nice juicy trade, especially with leverage on gold. So we'll see where this rolls up to. As you can see where it's struggling right now, let's get rid of this fib. Struggling in our little mini cough. It's struggling with the base here on the mini cough at 1980. 1981, you see that gold's at 1980, mini cough structure at 1981. So if it does this move, remember the reverse Livermore pivot, let me expand this here. If it finds this as resistance and does this move and does your inverse cup to the downside, this, oh, I had it going straight. This is where you would wanna look to see if this breaks out with any type of momentum, especially if the markets are dumping, for instance, this is where you can trigger more downside, okay? That's what you would see there in gold. Let's look at a couple of quick stocks and I'll wrap this up so we can get our weekend started. This this is my, uh, I you know, the only reason I would say this is my best trade of the year is because of position sizing, right? So that's why, because the drop, I mean, I've had bigger drops, obviously, in, other, in, the, in the metals and and in uh, Bitcoin, but this is 13 and a half percent. But the payoff time was so quick too. We shorted this on a Friday up at 231 in the room. And then by Tuesday, well, well what is today? Friday? So within a week, you got a 13 and a half percent move on a stock. Put that in perspective, the S&P after post GFC moves roughly 10% a year. Okay. You got 13 and a half percent in a week on a single stock on a short Garbage first solar company, 465 PE. Absolutely ridiculous. After almost a 30% pump up, lots of guys are still short this. I do think this is going to come way back down here, especially when the markets roll. I have first solar going all the way back down to, I think, what, 60 bucks down in this range. Yeah, 60 bucks. It's going to give all of this up when and if the markets roll, which for me is just simply a win. Let's look at NVIDIA. NVIDIA pumped beautifully to my 2618 up here. You see that? 316.86. Super bullish, but I want to show you more importantly than that. Let's get rid of these FIBs. You can see this. Look at the textbook Wyckoff breakout. You see this in equities more so in crypto than cryptos because equities are not as parabolic as cryptos. So we had our trading range, right? We were shorting up here in NVIDIA back and forth, back and forth in the room, trading in and out. Got on top of our trading range. Remember, I was looking for a bear structure. Shorted up here at 291. Got this nice drop down to 272. Took profits, came back up. Again, all this is in our room, guys. This came back over, found support on the ceiling, and then pumped up. And this is your new Wyckoff range that you're forming up here, okay? If this resistance at the 2618 holds, that's your new Wyckoff range that you're finding resistance at. And you'll look to repeat the same steps. Get volatility, get chop. It'll either break up or break down. NVIDIA is up crazy. Like I think it's up 200% off of the lows. So let's look, I believe the lows from October. It's crazy. Yeah. 194, 194%. So they report that our last tech stock to report, they're reporting May 25th. And I mean, look, this thing's going to come back down to this low. Eventually this is the AI bubble. The new bubble right now is the AI bubble, but you got resistance up there at the two, six, one, eight. So we shall see if this holds and um, yeah, we're just playing it by ear here. You really want to see the markets weaken and roll over because this is a out of stocks. This is quite a volatile stock. A lot of money has been piling into this, but that 316, 318 level is a good level to look to see if that resistance hold resistance holds. And if you do care to potentially fade it, that's the level I would be looking to fade it. MSTR. Another great trade, guys. Still waiting on this trade to come back up and give us another entry point or break down and give us an entry point. But if you nailed the top when I was sharing this, you got a 23% move in a single stock. Remember, real quick, just a reminder, what you're doing on MSTR, trading on extremes, waiting. I'm waiting for this to break down 
retest that base there and fail. And then I'm going to trade it. And I'll do this confluence with the markets rolling over. I don't see it coming back up to 333, but we'll see. Anything's possible. Just tracking like Bitcoin, lower highs, lower highs, exactly like Bitcoin. Looking at Tesla, Tesla's had a nice rebound back up again. Nothing for me in here, guys. Trading at extremes. We shorted this at 208, caught an awesome move here. Shared this with you on YouTube as well. 26.67% drop. Awesome, awesome move. Now you got a rebound. So I'd want to see it lose this area and really start breaking down. So whatever that price is, right around 150, you want to see it lose that and break down. If it did, for whatever reason, come back up 208 to 220 is the same range I'd be looking to build a new trade on. Last one, guys, Google. Google exceeded the 1618. I did not think it would do that, but it got up to the two spot zero five eight and it got rejected right there at 125 we'll see if google holds this range and starts building a white cough testing your base wherever that base is going to be coming back up reaffirming the top and then getting your volatility which will either break out and go up or it'll break down retest and go down guys the whole market can be traded this way hope you guys all have a fantastic weekend hope you enjoyed the video leave me some comments i'll reply to as many as i can like i said a lot of family here this weekend but take care everybody i will see you next video